This is the story of an ordinary little boy named Charlie Bucket. He was not faster or stronger or more clever than other children. And though his family was terribly poor, Charlie was the luckiest boy in the world. <laughs> he just didn't know it yet. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. No one's been in or out for years. Not since he closed it up and sent us all home. I know, Grandpa Joe. I wish we could see inside. And the world wished along with him. Then one day came an unexpected proclamation. Dear people of the world, I, Willy Wonka, have decided to allow five children to visit my factory. Five golden tickets have been hidden beneath the wrappers of five ordinary Wonka bars. Each of the finders will be shown around the factory personally by me. In addition, one of these children will receive a special prize beyond anything you could ever imagine. Beyond anything you could ever imagine. But I haven't any money for chocolate. Nothing's impossible, Charlie. Nothing. The first golden ticket was found by a gluttonous boy named Augustus Gloop. I'm eating the Wonka bar, but I taste the ticket. The second by a spoiled little girl named Baruka Sword. Daddy, I want a golden ticket now! The third was found by Violet Beauregard, an arrogant gum-chewing champion. The winner of that special prize is going to be me. And the fourth golden ticket was found by an ill-mannered genius named Mike TV. I calculated just where to look. An idiot can do it. Charlie's dream of exploring the Wonka factory was fast slipping away. When fate intervened. Ten dollars! Nothing's impossible, Charlie.
At that moment, Charlie felt rich, but more than that, he felt terribly hungry. Ten dollars was enough to feed his entire family for a week. So after careful consideration, Charlie decided to spend just one dollar of it on himself. One one coin for scrumptious fudge man and delight, please. Hungrily, Charlie pulled back the wrapper and took his first bite. Then pulling it back for another bite was one small corner of shiny paper. A golden ticket, the very last one in the entire world, and Charlie had found it. Greetings to you, the lucky finder of this golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. Charlie carried the ticket home to show his family as quick as his little legs could carry him. And the very next day, Charlie, Grandpa Joe, and the other four ticket holders gathered at the gates of the chocolate factory exactly as each ticket had instructed. And they all had big plans for when they got inside. I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. I will devour every one of the chocolates and candies and things of this nature. I'm going to look for things I want my daddy to get me. I'm going to be bored. You think Wonka's got any video games in there? Do you think Mr. Wonka will recognize you? Hard to say. It's been years since I worked for him. And exactly at the appointed time, the factory gate, closed for so long, finally opened. There stood Willy Wonka himself. Dear visitors, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to my humble factory. Now quickly, we mustn't dawdle. There's far too much to see. With little time and lots to see, the tour began. And they were whisked away to the very heart of the Wonka factory. The chocolate room. It's beautiful. What's more, it's all edible. And it was for every single thing around them was made of candy, even down to the green grass on the banks of his chocolate river. I'm in heaven! I bet. I want a chocolate room. I want two. The last one to the riverbank's a rotten egg. Every drop of that river is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality. Waterfall is most important. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall. When Augustus Blue heard that, he was determined to drink his fill. Just one zip? No, two zips. But even that proved too little for Augustus. Please, boy, please. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Leaning out to guzzle the chocolate, the gluttonous boy lost his balance and fell right in. And in moments, he was drawn into an enormous chocolate pipe, where he stuck fast. Help me! Extract! It's not big enough! I'll say. Not much of a swimmer, was he? Someone should do something. We must continue. There's so much to see in too little time. But you can't leave him there. Eventually he'll come out. The pressure will get to him. You know. And yet... If Augustus were freed earlier, the river could be cleaned quicker and production would continue sooner. And since the other children had not shown an interest in helping Augustus, Wonka left the task to Charlie. Be about your work then, and rejoin the tour when you can. I'll be able to check back with you at a moment's notice though, so don't be surprised to see me. Charlie agreed to stay behind. But as for how to get Augustus Bloop unstuck from the pipe, Charlie was about to find he would have more help than expected. 